Come on. Come on, continue to give him worship. Father, we thank you in this place. God, that you're already here. And the word declares that with the spirit of the Lord is that there is liberty. So God, we thank you in advance, oh God, for how you will speak, oh God, for how you will move, God, amongst your people today. Father, we need you, God, to show up. God, we need you, God, to show up today. And we give you glory, oh God, because it's about you oh god it's not about us oh god it's not by might nor by power but by the spirit of the living god we give you glory oh god today Hallelujah. i feel the glory in the room come on somebody open your mouth and forget to give them glory hallelujah yes sir, i feel them in here I feel the presence of the Lord in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, you can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Father, we bless you. God, we thank you. My respects to my pastor. I can see it. Pastor knows and lady knows in your respected place. I thank God for you, a humble and mighty man of God. And to you, my other pastors and brothers and ministers in the Lord, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our soon and coming King. Look, I stand here humble and honored today just to declare a word for the Lord. Listen, I ain't all of that in a bike of chips, but I'm just one that God graced today to declare the word of the Lord to you. Can I encourage you today as I encourage myself in the Lord. Listen, I came to have church. I will have it all by myself. Glory to the Lamb of God. And I will stick with the theme that has been given, perseverance. But, but there's two particular words that God kind of switch a bit. The first topic is after you've suffered a while. And if I would use for subtopic, perseverance is the key. Come on. Can I get you to help me announce my test? Come on, tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, perseverance is the key in this season. And as I lay my foundation in First Peter chapter 5, verse 10, you get it, you can say, man, I believe it's on the screen already. First Peter chapter 5, verse 10. Glory to God. Come on, when you got it, you can say amen. Father, we bless you in this place. And the word of God declares, it says, but all grace, all favor, who had, who had, it says, by God, all grace and favor, who had called us unto his eternal or everlasting glory. It says, by Christ Jesus, it says, after you have suffered a while, God said, I will make you perfect. And God said, yes, sir. God said, I will establish you. I will settle you. And I will lay a foundation. You must understand in this season that we are living in, we're going to go through a time of suffering but perseverance will be the key to you going through because in this season now pastor people don't talk about suffering anymore everybody is still declaring oh god oh god the prosperity message but this is the season now where we've got to prepare god's people oh god to learn how to stand because of what is coming on the earth people are not declaring this anymore and as i go as i go in this time and season we are living and people don't want to hear it but a lot of preachers have changed from what God is saying to what people are saying. Good God. But oh God. But as preachers and teachers in the gospel of God, our job is not to be people pre-pleasers. But our job is to declare and say what God said and how God said to say it. Because many now are compromising in their speeches. Many now are compromising in their sermons. And they're causing people now to go astray from what God is really saying in this hour. Hallelujah, can I get an amen here? But in this 21st century, a large percentage of us have gotten comfortable where we are. So God oftentimes has to put us in a place now to get us out of our comfortable place. And that's why God would take many of us through many trials and many tests because we've become so comfortable and we wonder what's going on. But God is trying to take you now to another level, to another place. But anything now, but anything now that comes against your comfortable place, oh God, it's oh God, it's a problem. But God is trying to get us to move where we are. So, oh God, have mercy. Some of us don't know the last time. My God, we spent a good fasting and, and consecration before the Lord. Well, Y'all ain't going to say nothing. 
but this is the hour God said, but this kind come but by prayer and fasting. And in order for us to start, in order for us to be prepared for what is coming, we've got to place ourselves in the presence of the Lord God, in the presence of the King. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, the word of God declares, it says, to everything there is a season. And a time to every purpose under heaven. You must understand every season and our life is never the same. But God oftentimes takes us in a particular season over because we have not learned the lesson that God was trying to teach us. So God oftentimes must keep us in the fire, oh God, a little bit longer so that we could yield to him in the process that he's trying to take us through. But many people pass are trying to come off the potter's wheel. But God is trying to break us in an area. My God, we tried to come off. Oh, God have mercy. But we have not learned to suffer yet. Studying this word, I got a better appreciation, Pastor, for suffering and persevering and going through. Because I understand God is not trying to harm us, but God is trying to get that earthen treasure, that anointing, that oil that lies on the inside of you and me. He's trying to get it out, but we're not allowing God to break us in the process. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Come on, let me move. But you must understand in James chapter 1, verse 2 and 4, the word of God declares, it says, brethren, it says, count it or consider it a joy. God says, when you fall into diverse temptation, he said, knowing this, that the trying or the testing of your faith is working patience in you. But, oh God, many of us don't want the process of God. We don't like the breaking and molding of God. But God, all God is trying to do is to get us to our destined place in him. Because the next level, oh God, the next blessing depends on, oh God, on how you allow God, on how you allow God to break you. Because God can't trust you with the next blessing. Oh God, oh God, because you have not been broken before him. If God released the blessing now, many of us would mess it up. That's why we have not received some stuff yet. Because we refuse to be broken at the hand of God. God can't trust some of us with a million dollars, Pastor. You wouldn't see some of us for the next month. Pastor, one, so that's why God has got to break us. So we've got to allow God to break us in this season. <laughs> allow God to do molding and you that he wants to do. And the scripture goes on in verse 3. It says, knowing this, having this understanding. It says that the trying or the testing of your faith, of your belief, of your function in God. It says, a building patience on the inside of us. And if any of you would tell the truth, some of us ain't got no patience. Oh God. Instead of us picking up the Bible, if someone really cross us the right way, we can pick up something else. And that's why God has to break us. That's why God has to do a work on the inside of us. So he takes us through many trials and many times he teaches us, oh God. He brings us to a place of humility and suffering does that. Come on here. Understand this, God is trying to get us to a place where we learn to wait on him. Questions we often ask God. God, how long do I have to go through this? God, why am I going, God? God, when are you going to bring me out? God, why do I have to go through this? Have you ever asked God those questions? But understand in the midst of what you're going through, we've got to learn to say, God, I thank you, God. Even though I don't understand what you're doing, Father, I thank you for the process. Because, God, I know you're working something out, God, for my good. You're doing a work on the inside of me. But we run from the process. We run from the process. But understand this. Understand this. When God is through with us in this season, as we yield to him, the process. Listen, I don't care what devil come at you. Listen here. Listen here. You'll be so God. You'll be so anointed in God. You'll be so strong in God that even when the winds begin to blow and toss, it won't move you because you yield it to the process of God. My first point, you must know. Suffering is a guarantee in our walk with God. You might as well get used to it, you might as well get prepared. It is a guarantee. But there are two reasons why we suffer. There are many more, but I think these two are relevant now. First thing, it is a part of the process of God. Secondly, sin, which is our disobedience to God, causes us to suffer. Because pastor, we place ourselves in some situations. God said, I didn't tell you go there. God, I did not tell you to say that. So some of you, your suffering is because of your disobedience. It has nothing to do with the process of God. Oh, God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, God, have mercy. Let me give you scripture. 
in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, the word of God declares. It says, for all day that we live godly. All day when you would make up in your mind, God, I'm going to live right before you, God. I'm going to lie. He says, all day that we live godly shall suffer persecution. People, listen, people are going to rise up you just because you're trying to live right before God. They got a problem. When you wasn't living right by God, they ain't had nothing to say. But now that you're trying to line up, you're trying to hold up the standard of God, they got an issue. But can I declare you don't drop your standard in this season for nobody. Listen, let them call you whatever they want to call you. But keep the standard of God high in your life. They got a problem with you living holy before God. Say, folk don't, oh God, folk don't preach this no more. Come on, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 10. The word of God declares us that we are troubled. On every side, everywhere you turn, something happening in our homes, in our families, on our jobs. He says, We are troubled on every side. God said, Yet, He said, Yet, we are not distressed. We're not in a place of danger. We're not in a place, of, oh God, we're in a desperate need. He says, We are perplexed. We can't find a way out. Oh God, God, God from Zion. But He says, Yet, we are not in despair. He said, We are persecuted. Folks always got something to say. You could be home in your house, they still got something to say. You're in the church, they still got something to say. One of the things we got to learn as a people, we've got to get delivered from the opinions of people. You will never be able to move forward in God. You will never be able to fill your purpose in God until you learn to get delivered from the opinions of people. Let them answer here. People will cause you not to, oh God, not to walk in the will of God. Don't allow them to stop you. Not in this season. You must understand where we are on the time clock of God. This is no time for us to play. But it's time for us to plumb the line. To say what God say. How God say to say it. But do it in decency though. And in order. Pastor, I've been, oh, shut up, man, see. I've been watching men and women of God embarrass people. That's not God. The Bible says all things should be done in love. This all things should be done decent and in order. So now a soul that was, oh God, that was once willing to come before God, now is broken. And guess what you know what they say? They're not saying the leader did it. They're saying church people. So they're categorizing every one of us because of church hurt. Eh, and that's why God says, you can preach. You become, listen, you can be, listen, you'll be just like a sounding brass and a tingling cymbal without the love of God. Even your preaching and your teaching, even when you prophesy, it has to be done in love. Oh, good God from Zion. Let me move. It says, it says, but we are forsaken. It says, we are persecuted, but not forsaken. It says, we are cast down. Some of us, God allows us to, some of us, God allows us to go to the lowest point. We've been to some places that we can't even talk. But God said, it was me. It was by my hand. It was by my, God, oh God, good God from inside. God said, it was by my hand. I allowed it to happen. It says, the other verse says, verse 10. It says, always bearing about in the body, the dying of the Lord. Also, that the life of Jesus may be made manifest in our mortal body. You got to understand. <laughs> we can feel a little bit of what Jesus felt when he suffered. We're not going to walk in a bed of roses. Every day is not going to be sunny. There's some days that we will be tested by the hand of God. Listen, our faith is being tested now in this season. And some of us praying, we asking God for some stuff, and God ain't saying nothing. You know why? God said, let me see what you can do. God said, let me see if you're going to go back to where you were before. Sometimes, there's sometimes God don't answer us. There's some things we pray for, God don't say nothing, because he's testing us. God said, let me see what you can do when I don't say nothing. Are you going to continue to seek my face? Are you going to stay before me? My second point. Having perseverance, endurance, and the fruit of long suffering is necessary during times of trials. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 20, the word of God declares, says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Also listed in that is long suffering, which, mean, which means forbearance, fortitude, or patience. In James chapter 1, 12, the Bible says, blessed or happy is the man that endured temptation. It says, for when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life. Listen, we're not suffering in vain. Everything that we're going through is not in vain. That is if you did not put yourself in this situation. Because some of us get ourselves in some stuff and then we all come to pastor to pray. No, the devil is a liar. You got to walk it. Because the Bible says, what you sow, you will reap. And God oftentimes allows us to stay in that situation. God say, I want to teach you. Never, oh God, never to walk in disobedience to be again. 
But pastor, we go back and do the same thing. And then they come and want you to pray them out. Some situation we didn't have to get in. We opened doors. That God did not say to open. So we suffer because of it, woman of God. Everything ain't the devil. No, so we blame everything on the devil. The devil's mind, I wish I had thought of that. So it's important in the season that we obey God. Come on, let me move on. In 2 Timothy, in 2 Timothy verse 2 and 3, the word of God because it says, Thou therefore and your hardness as a good soldier. Can I, oh, can I ask you what type of soldier are you? Because listen, a good soldier of God knows God. A good soldier got some backbone. A good soldier knows how to stand in the midst of a war. But one thing I understand about a good soldier, he never goes into battle without his armory and without Oh God, and without his weaponry. But the problem with us, we're trying to fight a spiritual battle in the flesh. This is, oh God, have mercy. You cannot fight a spiritual battle in this, oh God, in the flesh. That's why some of us can't persevere. That's why we got no perseverance, because we're trying to fight things in the flesh. Then this is a spiritual battle that we're in. Come on, let me move. Thirdly, there are benefits to persevering and suffering for the Lord Jesus Christ. I love the scripture in Romans chapter 8, verse 17 and 18. The word of God declares, it says, If ye children, then heirs, or being inheritor, or heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so, be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together with him. The next verse, verse 18, it says, For I reckon, or I've taken inventory. He says that the suffering, the pain, the hardship, everything that you're going through, everything that you're going through, it says for this present time, the Bible says it's not worthy, it's not deserving to be compared with the glory. You know what that word glory means? It means grace. That word grace that translates power. God said, listen, the anointing that I'm about to release on you in this season, listen, you got to suffer. you got to go through. You've got to endure the process of God. Because in this season, listen, listen, being in just speak in tongues, we can just preach, but we can move in power. And this is the hour of power. My God, be local. My God, when we open our mouth now, the power of God has got to flow out of us. That's what God is trying to do. What true relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is built in a time of suffering. Not shouting, not speaking in tongues. That's good in this place, but it's built in a time of suffering. And that's why you, oh God, and that's why you got to be careful what you ask God. And God said that to me, oh God, just the other day. He said, son, tell my people, be careful what they ask me for, because I'm going to do it quickly. Don't say, God, I want to be anointed. God, I want to be used by you. God's okay. Good. So God will begin to take you to some tests. And be like, what's going on? God said, no, you said you won't be anointed. So I've got to test you. I've got to prepare you to take you to the world. Be careful what you ask God for. Say, God, I want to preach like Pastor knows. Oh, God, okay. Sit down and talk to Pastor. Ask him what he been through. Ask him the many night he shed tears. Tears that you even don't see. Good God from Zion. Come on, let me move. I like this next chapter, Pastor. In Philippians 10, the word of God declares, it said that I may know him. It says, in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship, you know that word fellowship means in Greek? It means a sharer, a partaker of his sufferings. You want to know God? You want to move? You want to be used mightily in the things of God? It's going to come through suffering. But guess what? You will not suffer for Christ if you, if you don't have no perseverance. Perseverance is the key to suffering for God. Come on, let me move. It goes on to say, in first, it goes on to say, it says, it says that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of, of his suffering. It says being made conformable or similar unto his death. In first Peter chapter 4, verse 12 and 13, where the God declares, it says, Beloved, think it not strange. Don't think it is something unusual. Because some of us go through some stuff now, we think nobody has been through it. And sometimes it feels that way. We feel like we're going through more than anybody else. And God be like, no. God be like, I'm talking to the intercessor. God said, talk to the pastor and the bishop. They tell you some stuff. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You know why people scared to, you know why people scared to go through? Because a lot of us don't share our real testimony. But if we tell people what, oh God, what we really been through, they will know that they can stand because we stand. But, oh God, but folk don't tell the real testimony no more. So people say, man, they said, pastor has not been through. But if you talk to him, you'll find who he's been through, what you went through, and more. That's why it's important to get godly counsel. Goes on to say, 
It says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery intense trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened unto you. It says, But rejoice as ye are partakers of Christ's what? sufferings. It says that when his glory, there goes his glory again. It says that when his glory shall be revealed, you shall be also glad with exceeding joy. In past years gone by, many leaders have been teaching us how to dance, how to name it and claim it, how to speak in tongues, all that is good in this place. But one of the things that they did not teach us, and one of the things that, one of the things pastors that we need to teach this generation is how to endure, how to wait on God. Because, because oh God, because this generation lacks patience. Get him on, so her. My God, they see you preaching, Pastor. They see you preaching, Lady Knows, but they don't know the stuff that you've been through to get where you are. But we got to teach this generation how to, oh God, how to endure and how to wait on God. And the third thing we've got to teach this generation is how to fight, how to do spiritual warfare. Because there'll be times you may not be able to reach, Pastor. You may not be able to reach the leader. But if you, oh God, but if you learn to fight for yourself, this generation know how to fight. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, 18, the word of God declares, it says, for our light affliction. You be like, God, you're saying what I'm going through. God said it. He says, for our light affliction, which is before, only for a moment. What you're in is for a season. But you've got to yield to God and allow him to break you and do the work that he wants you in the midst of the season that you're going through. Listen, I'm going through too. But I've yet still got a praise in my belly. I've yet said, God, I don't understand some stuff you're doing, but God, I say thank you. It says, for our light affliction, this is before a moment. It says, it work it for us, a fire and exceeding and eternal weight of glory. It says, while we look at the things which are seen, but at things which are not seen, it says, the things that are seen are temporal. But the problem why God has to take us sometimes around the mountain again, is Pastor, we ain't learned the lesson yet. We still complain in the midst of suffering. God said, man, I'm trying to get you to a place. I'm trying to get that earthen treasure. I'm trying to get that oil that's, oh God, that gift that's locked up on the inside you out. But we don't want to stay on the part as we long enough. This generation does not want to, okay, does not want to suffer. But we will go through. Oh God. <laughs> I lost some of them. It says, it says, for the things that are seen, they're temporal, but the things that are not seen are what? Eternal. And the thing is, it's not when we go through, but it's how we go through. What is the posture of your heart in the midst of trials and tests? What if God takes something from you that you really love? Are you going to curse God and die? Like Job, oh God, like Job's wife told him to? What is the posture of your heart in the midst of trials and tests? We should be saying, God, thank you. I don't understand what you're doing, God. I don't, but God, I thank you. In the midst of it, I give you glory. Because when God trying to break his mind, you, you tell God you won't be anointed. You ask God for a particular thing, so God is taking you through the process to get it. That when he released it to you, you will remember and know that it's God that did it. Because people now try to take glory for what God, oh God, good God. See, 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 understand. You know why God got to do it? So when he do it, nobody can take glory for it. Because folks in this season trying to take, oh God, trying to take glory for stuff God doing. But not in this season. Come on. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't give up. Come on, y'all help me. Come on, say, neighbor, don't give up. In 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, we know it. It says, there are no temptation, no experience taking you. But such as is common. But, some, boy, but sometimes, pastors feel like God only me getting through that. I just feel like that sometimes. I just like, God, this heavy. See, but when you ask God for something, yeah, when you ask God to take you to the next level, when you ask God to use you, Michael, he's going to take you through. But perseverance. Is the key. It says, there's no temptation taken, but such as is common. But it says, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted, to be tried. That bubble which you're able and make a way of escape. But that's if God puts you in the situation. There's too many Christians, we're putting ourselves in situation. So we're opening up doors that are illegal to God. And we refuse to close it. Oh God. So we're suffering because of our disobedience to God. and got nothing to do with it. I've got to bring the balance. Oh, good God from Zion. Come on, let's move. In this season and time, we've got to take on the mentality and the heart and spirit of the mind of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We know the story. The king told them to bow. They refused to bow, but notice something. Them not bound did not stop them from going in the fire. 
Ah, yeah, yeah. See, 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 Pastor, we missed that. Even though they stood for God, you think God would have rescued them, but he still took them in the fire. They still went through the storm. They still went through the test. But notice what happened, right? The Bible said the Lord are here on their head, but since they did not smell like smoke. And can I declare to you in this season, my God, this season when we go through, we ain't going to look like what we went through. People can be wondering, hold on, wait a minute. Is this the same brother I was, oh God, is this the same person I was working against? Is this the same person I was praying against? Oh yeah, you got some people that pray against, oh God, that pray against the God do it in your life. And you wonder why it held up. But in this season, when we, oh God, when we yield to God in the process, we ain't going to look like what we've been through. And we can have the same testimony as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They did not bow, but they still had to go through the fire. You would think God would have saved them, but God still allowed them to go through. Because in the fire, he was there. And, and listen, in the midst of what you're going through, Jesus is right there in the fire with you. Well, let me move. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 and 37. Where God declares, it says, cast not away your confidence, your belief, your faith in God. It says, for it had recompense of reward. But I like the next part. It says, for, it says, for you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God. Pastor, people are not concerned about the will of God no more. It's about what we want. It's about what, but I thought God was in control. I thought God was the boss. It says, you have need of patience after you've done what God instructed you to do. It's time for some of us to woe God, to do that which God has instructed us to do. Some stuff held up because we have not fulfilled the mandate of God yet. Lord Jesus, Lord. It says, notice what it says after that. It says that ye might receive the promise. Stuff held up because we still walking in disobedience to God, some of us. We still didn't give the sister the word or the brother the word that God showed you in a dream that God told you to speak to them. Oh, God. It says, for yet in a little while, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. I know it seems like God taking his time, but God has to take his time because of what he's doing on the inside of us. See, you got to understand, oh God, this is all about what God wants to do in here. Oh God, that when he presents us to the world, my God, that we'll be true ambassadors and have the character of Christ. Because some people stand and they have no character. But, so they're an embarrassment to the body of God. Refuse to allow anyone to embarrass him in this season. Oh, good God from Zion. Come on, let me move. Just about done. Fifthly, the true purpose of suffering and perseverance. Number one, suffering and persevering makes us sensitive to the Holy Spirit of God. Our discernment increases. The devil can't fool us no more. Not with that same test. Because why? We've been through, we've suffered. Secondly, suffering and perseverance causes us to hear God's voice much clearer. But that's if you yield to God in the process, cause you not to know God's voice. I got, they can't fool you. Thirdly, suffering and perseverance makes us compassionate to one another. Pastor, I've run into some rude Christians. They, listen, listen, they will cuss you out. They have no compassion. They see a brother, sister going through this man, you got to be stronger than that. So God said, okay, let me put on you. And when God put on them what was on the sister, they want us to have big 40-day fast for them. But they were not compassionate when that other brother and sister was going through. It says, ye which are strong should what? Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. So God often has us to take us to the same thing that sister and brother was going to when we was looking down on them. Oh, y'all ain't, listen. I'm trying to be real good, but anyhow. Suffering and persevering gives us an idea of what Jesus had to go through. Because we think his death on the cross was, listen, that was some pain. And none of us would have done it. We would not have given our son or daughter to die for this world. We would not have done it. Don't care how deep he is, we would not have done it. Come on, let me move. Suffering and perseverance births the spirit of humility. God oftentimes has to bring us down low. Because some of us are too high. God's okay. I got this. And he has to bring us, some of us down low, Pastor. We was too high. And suffering and perseverance would cause us to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. Because he would put us in a situation where we got to humble ourselves. Suffering and perseverance kills the flesh, the idamic nature. Because some more has got to die. Too much are still alive on the altar. Yeah, but, and that's why when someone says something that's the work, we ain't grabbing the Bible. We grabbing the table. And they're like, Rev? They're like, Rabbi, sorry. I didn't know. 
So guess what? Character ruin. So now you can't even invite them to church no more. God, see, we missing this thing. When people look at us, they should see God. They, oh God, they should see Jesus. We should be in representation of, oh God, of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. But so many times we've been failing because we, are, because we refuse to allow God to break us. Uh, uh, notice what he told the porter. He said, notice what he told the clay. He said, he said can I do with you as the porter of the clay? And he was talking to the church, oh, house of Israel. But why do you want to come off the porter's wheel? And this season we got to allow God to do what he wants to do, but it's going to go through suffering. And perseverance is the key. Come on, let me move. Suffering and perseverance brings us into right alignment with God. It causes us to line up. That's why God takes us through, you know. That's why he takes us through so many trials and tests. It causes us to line up. Suffering and perseverance causes us to seek God more. Because we want what we in. We want God to bring us out. So we can stay before God. Come on, Jesus. Listen, this the most, this the most God ever. Here's something for stalk there. And this is why he's got to take us because the fire is so hot. We before God every morning. God said, I've been trying to get you for a few months now. But God said, I got you now. You know, honestly, it causes you to go after God because you, listen, and it's not that you just want the pain to stop. You just want to come out of what you're in. And suffering and perseverance does that. Let me move. Suffering and perseverance teaches us how to endure because the more we complain and grumble, the more God turns up the heat. So you got to go through your process. Don't say, God, like I tired. I've said it many times. And I noticed God has turned up the heat. I mean, like, you would think God, no. Because what he's trying to do on the inside. Listen, there's so much gift. There's so much gifts. And talents locked up on the inside of us. And the only way to bring it out is to pressure. Pressure brings it out. Oh, good God from Zion. Suffering and perseverance teaches us how to love unconditionally. That, oh, Shema. That's one of the things that's been lacking. I notice in the body of Christ, woman of God. We don't love like how we used to no more. I'm not talking about this house. I'm saying the body. That's all people are looking for, you know. They don't want you to call up and say, man, lift your hands. Let me tell you, no. They say, man, they say, brother, sister, I love you. That's it. Or you just go and hug them. I don't care how they look, how they smell. Some of us ain't going to do it, though. That's all. That's all love. Suffering and perseverance, it births ministry. It causes the gifts and talents to activate. And God will put you in a situation now, that gift will come up. The gift you didn't know was in you, but now it has to be activated now because you're under pressure. Suffering and perseverance causes us to die to self. And God gave me an example of a dead man, a dead person. When they in this casket before you, you can grab their hand. You can take their shoes. You can take their tie. They won't move. Oh, God. You can talk to them. They won't answer. But if they do, run. They will not move. And I said, God, what are you saying? God said, I want my people to be dead like that. God said, I want you. God said, I don't care what people say to you. I want you to stand on, on what I say. I said, God, what you said? God said, I want you to be like that. God said, I want, God said, I need my people to be dead to the things of this world. My, oh, God, we are still so tangled up and wrapped up in stuff in this world. That's why God can do some of us, Pastor, because we're tainted. Oh, God. Suffering and perseverance causes the warrior to be awakened on the inside of us. And this is when we get to a place where we say, devil, enough is enough. And that's the place that God pushes us pushing some of us to in this season. We tired. We tired, but we ain't tired enough yet. Because when you get tired, that's when you begin to get a father in the name of Jesus. But we're so comfortable in the place where we are. And God is trying to get us from that place. I can show you a little bit where God is trying to take us. Let me move. Let me go there. Let me go straight there. There are some things you must understand. We will and must go through an experience. It's predestined, preordained. You can't avoid it. Because of the call of God and the anointing of God that's on your life, there's some stuff you can't run from. But my season, different from yours. My trial, my test, different from yours. So you can't compare yourself with no one else. Because what I can handle, you may not be able to handle. What you can handle, I can't handle. Because all of our, see, that's why we can't be jealous of one another, because we are unique in God. What you can do, I can't do, because God did not anoint me that way. 
So that's why God has to deal with us on individual levels. But we've got to go through something. You're looking at someone who didn't like to go through tests. When you talk, I say, God, again? I say, but God, I had something last, last month. God, I say, again. You know, you're knowing me. Me and God have some talks. Pastor, I see Jesus many times holding God's hand from hitting me. See, I, see, I ain't deep like y'all. Many times. Come on, let's move. Suffering and perseverance causes us to change. Oh, God, that's it right there. Having a better heart. Having a better attitude, a better spirit. As Christians, we ain't supposed to be rude. Rude, huh? That's why God got to break some of us. That's why he's got to take us to get some stuff out of us, out of us that we're supposed to leave behind. It says, any man be in Christ, he is a what? A new creature. No, we're not perfect, but we should, my God, but we should know how to talk to people. That's why God has to put some of us down in the mud. Allow us to suffer that so, oh God, so the character of Christ could be demonstrated. But here it is. God is trying to get us to this place right here. The word of God declares in Psalms 66 and 12. It says, thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads. God said, I allow them to say what they say. I allowed them to do what they do, but it was for a purpose. Check this out. It says, you went through the fire. Understand something about fire. Fire does not only consume and destroy. Fire purifies. Even our works will be tried in fire. Go, check this out. It goes on to say, it says, and through the water, God, God said, I still got to wash you. But notice what happened. It says, but thou brought us out into what? A wealthy place. But when people think of wealth past, they always connect wealth with money and riches. And yes, that's true. But you know what that word wealthy means in Greeks? God said wealthy place means a place of freedom, a place of rest. Because some, some of us, we have some mind battles. We got some, some of us can't even sleep in the nighttime. Yeah, we know God. Yeah, we say, but we got so much stuff going on. So God said, and this season, I'm bringing you into a place of rest, man, where you can rest. As a matter of fact, some of, some of you need to rest in God. The situation you're trying to fix, God done fixed it. So God said, just rest in me. God said he's taking the restriction off. Wealthy place is a place of freedom. It's also a place of abundant prosperity and overflowing abundance. But we had to go through what? The fire. We had to go through men riding over heads and through the water. Just about done. In Psalms 13, 5. It says, for his anger endureth for a moment. His favor is life. It says, weeping men endure for a And some of us, some of you are in your weeping season. You're crying. And your crying isn't really literary tears, but your crying is your crying out to God when you're going to move. God when you're going to answer. God when you're going to move in my family. God when you're going to touch this one. And God said, God said, tell you that your morning has come. Come on. He said, your morning has come. You can hear it. Listen. When morning comes, it signifies a new day, a new season, or a new time in our lives. It doesn't matter what happened the day before, but just make it to the morning. Yeah? Oh God, get from Zion. Understand this, when morning comes, when morning comes, things change. Yes, you might have cried the day before, but God said, tell you that your morning has come. He's about to change some stuff. In my closing, what have we learned? God said, after you've suffered and persevered, God said, I will perfect you. I will complete you thoroughly. I will prepare, I will restore you. Secondly, God said, I will establish or some, or some translations say establish. This means to steadfastly set or make or put in place. God said, I will strengthen you. And he says, I will settle you. In Isaiah 40, verse 31, the word of God says, it says, but they that wait upon the Lord. That word wait, it means to hope and to expect. But the word wait comes out of that word we got greater. This means to serve. God said, while you wait, God, I need you to serve. And God said, in the midst of you serving, I'm going to renew your strength because I know you're going to get tired amongst the way. He says, he says, not only, he says, it's, the scripture says, it says, I will renew your strength. I will mount you up on wings of eagles. Do you know, I understand why God used an eagle man of God. The eagle has the ability to fly 20 to 30,000 feet in the air. And God said in this season, when I elevate you, your enemies will not be able to find you. He said the witches and the warlocks will not be able to find you because where I'm taking you in this season. But you got to endure. <laughs> Glory to God. God says he's going to take us to such a level in this season as we yield to him in the midst of the process he's taking us through. My last scripture in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. It says, therefore, my beloved brethren, he says, be steadfast. He says, be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. It says, for as much as you know that your labor, your toil, your prayers, your fasting, God sees you. He said, it's not in vain in the Lord. 
Be encouraged, my brother, my sister.